Welcome to the Intermarket Analysis Update. This is Bring Prepared Sunday, June 26th, where we'll go through some comparisons of some indexes. We'll look at stocks versus bonds and gold and other markets just to see how things look. And you'll see a little bit of overlap in this video. There's potentially a positive scenario developing on our daily charts that might be worth your attention. So I try to spread out what I talk about in the daily, weekly, and intermarket analysis videos. But I think since not all of you watch all of the videos, I still thought that I should include this because it could be important and it could help you make some decisions. So I'll go over that in this video here. So this is looking at how things are for Monday, June 27th. Let's first look at valuation. And we're still in a downtrend overall with the S&P, especially on a monthly basis. And that's the chart that you see here. We're coming down to the PE20. Now this is the trailing 12 months. This looks back where a lot of participants base their decisions on the forward-looking earnings per share. That is open to a lot of interpretation and modifications and changes as things are going forward, even though that's the reality of the market, to get an idea of if we're expensive or fairly priced or inexpensive, sometimes it helps to look back. We are coming down right below the PE20 ratio. Down on the bottom, I have a comparison of the two where you take the S&P price and the PE20 value, and it shows that we're just coming down a little bit now. We're still expensive, but we're not as expensive as we had been. This gives you a historical perspective going all the way back to 1980 and how these valuations have fared over the course of time. Now, this is the scenario, and I wanted to put it towards the beginning of the video, that might be turning positive. If you go back to last December in 2021, we were making new highs with the S&P. And that's what I have up here on top, just a line chart. And this isn't a trend or anything like that. This is just to bring out, and I have to clear my voice. <clears throat> this is just to bring out what I'm seeing in the charts here. And we were making new highs with the S&P towards the end of 2021, but we were not making new highs when you look down below, when you do a ratio between the Qs and the SPY. Also, when you compare discretionary, the things that make life interesting with the SPY, that was an also showing a negative divergence at that time. And when you look at the growth versus value, that was also making a negative divergence. Well, what's interesting here is we made another low in the S&P 500, but do you see how we're making a positive or bullish divergence with this ratio when you look at the Qs, discretionary, and growth over value? There might be a rotation that's starting to happen in the markets, going from value over to more growth oriented. And that's where we get the real gains from. That's where you get the real high tech stocks that a lot of people really like to invest in that really move and can take the indexes higher. Well, I have another chart here too, showing we also have a lower low in the S&P, same chart, but we're showing a positive divergence when we look at growth versus value with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. Doesn't mean we're gonna go higher from here, but it means that under the surface, if you look at just the index, you're gonna to be told one story. That's clearly headed down. But if you look under the hood, we're starting to see some rotation. This played a big part in how stocks have behaved for the first part of 2022. Now that we're getting halfway through the year, this may mark some kind of a shift. And I say may, because we have to watch this being played out. And I do update this on the daily videos. So if you wanna keep in touch with what's happening here, I'll be updating this every time I post a video each day. But let's look at growth and value. Growth has been in a downtrend overall, but we're seeing a little bit of an upward bounce, but it doesn't really look like much of anything yet. 
Also with value, even though we saw some recent weakness and a little bit of a bounce, doesn't really tell us anything. If we look at the growth versus value, we're seeing a little blip up. We actually were able to get back above the moving average. Well, we've done that before. So you don't really see this by looking at either one of these charts. On the bottom, I have value against growth. Here it just shows where growth has been underperforming value. And this chart shows where value has been outperforming growth. Okay, and we're not really getting much there. We had to look into the sectors to find that. Here's another ETF showing how growth has been really underperforming in 2022 and how value has been outperforming so far. This is just another measurement showing how growth has been underperforming value, but we're seeing a little blip up recently. Let's look at some indexes. The CRB has been pretty strong, but it's starting to come back down. It's down to this moving average. Is it going to continue to fall or will it be able to turn back up? Also looking at the NASDAQ 100, and these are growth stocks compared to the S&P 500, which is growth and value stocks. We're starting to see some life in the NASDAQ 100 when you compare the two indexes. Looking at the S&P 100, which are the biggest stocks in the S&P against the rest of the S&P, we're seeing some improvement here. When you look at small caps against the S&P, they are really underperforming right now. For a good, healthy environment, you'd want to see the small caps doing well. We're just not seeing that right now. Looking at the low volatility ETF, these are the value plays where we've seen some recent weakness. And we're also looking at a potential death cross here as far as just the low volatility stocks by itself. When we look at a ratio, it's still been outperforming the rest of the S&P, but we're seeing some recent weakness. Here is another measure that some people think is a better measure of the overall market than the S&P 500. You have the Dow stocks, the transport stocks, and the utilities all put together into one composite average. And it's really been underperforming, but we are starting to see some a, a little bit of a bounce here. Looking at Dow Theory, here's the Dow up on top where it's been bouncing a bit. The transports have also been bouncing. And the utilities, which had a lot of weakness, which really had done pretty well in 2022, they've been seeing a, a recent bounce as well. And here's a longer term look at the different. Now, most people just use the Dow and the transports as part of Dow Theory. I also include utilities just to keep an eye on what's happening. Looking at bonds, stocks have been outperforming bonds on the monthly chart, but we're starting to see some weakness. Does that mean that we might be seeing some potential strength in bonds? That might help the market. If bonds start to go up, that means interest rates go down and the stock market is really freaked out about interest rates. So if we can get into a period where stocks and bonds rise together in price, that could really help the market. Here's comparing bonds with stocks, just shows how bonds have really underperformed, even though lately they've been outperforming. But in this latest chart here, we're taking a step down. This is comparing the S&P 500 with the 10-year yield, where the S&P has really underperformed the rise in interest rates, but we're seeing a little bit of a bounce. Can we get above the 50? Can we eventually get back to the 200? Can this whole thing turn into a golden cross? We're hoping for that, but it isn't happening yet. Here's the junk bond index, just to keep an eye on that. This tends to follow the stock market. And here is the correlation or ratio between the junk bond ETF and bond ETFs, which just shows the junk bonds have been outperforming. And if you think about it, that makes sense. People are seeking a higher yield. And sometimes they have to assume more risk in order to do that. Looking at the different sectors, the energy sector, which has been the sector to be in in 2022, has been showing some recent weakness. And when you compare it to the S&P 500, it is still in an uptrend and still outperforming, but that might be coming into jeopardy. Here's the tech sector, which this is where your growth is from. 
it's been really down in 2022, but seeing a bounce. Can this bounce continue? Semiconductors, which make up a huge part of tech, have also been in a downtrend, but we're seeing a little bit of a bounce here. Can that continue? Here's tech against the S&P, where we've been in a downtrend overall, and both have struggled in 2022, but we're starting to see tech bounce a little bit because the S&P has held up better than tech so far. Some other areas, here's growth, the stocks that really make the market go higher, and bonds, where we're seeing growth come back up to this moving average. So we're seeing some improvement. Here's the 10 year, which has really been outperforming tech. Well, we're seeing some weakness right now. And then the inverse of that, here's the tech sector, which has been very weak, is seeing a bit of a bounce. Here's staples, the things that you have to have, which have been the sector to be in, one of the sectors in 2022 against discretionary. It's still in an overall uptrend, but showing some weakness. And here's the inverse. Discretionary has been underperforming, but showing some recent strength. The energy sector, which has been the number one sector against tech, which for a long time had been the number one sector. The energy sector is still doing the best, but is showing some weakness when compared to tech recently. Here's gold, which has done absolutely nothing and has a lot of people very mystified. It's still been outperforming the S&P because the S&P has been going down as gold has been not doing very much at all. And here's gold to the dollar, which shows that the dollar has held up better than gold in 2022. High leverage loans, we wanna keep an eye on that. If these really start to go down, that might mean that these very leveraged loans might be coming into risk. If they're going up, that means there's less of a sign of risk. Here's our intermarket analysis chart, which shows that energy is still in the lead. I'm sorry, oil is still in the lead, even though we've seen some recent weakness. Number two is the dollar. Gold is almost flat going back to the beginning of the year where stocks are negative, but trying to bounce. Bonds are the most negative. And can they stage some kind of a bounce here? They haven't yet. Looking at some different indexes, here's the S&P on the top. Here are mid caps and here are the small caps. And sometimes it's helpful just to look at all three of these indexes compared to each other. And then here's a longer term look at that same chart. This is another thing that could potentially be positive. We have the stocks that are below their 50 day moving average. It just gave us a recent extreme negative reading. And if you look down here in the S&P up above, this shows that sometimes when we bottomed here, that can mark a significant bottom in the S&P. We're also seeing that with the mid caps, it gave us an extreme negative reading and here is the mid cap index up above. And here is the small caps. They've also given us an extreme negative reading. And here is that index as well. So we're seeing a real convergence of a real oversold condition. Now we need to figure out, is this just a dead cat bounce that we've been seeing? Or is there gonna be some real strength behind this? Here's the small cap index by itself. We came down to this pivot level and have been able to bounce up off of that. We might have some resistance overhead current prices. Here's the mid caps, the same thing, came down to support, bounced up off of that, but we have some overhead resistance. The Dow never did come down to a support level, but it's been able to get back above this pivot level. And can it continue to turn more positive? The NASDAQ never came down to a pivot level, but has been able to go back above this other pivot level. NASDAQ 100 also showing some recent strength. Can it continue? That's the big thing. Wilshire 5000, this is a broader index. We never came down to the pivot level, but we've been able to get back above this other pivot level, which had been potentially acting as resistance. Now that we're above it, it may act as support if we go down. ARC, which has been in a very severe downtrend, especially if you go back to the all-time high, 
it's coming up to the moving average and it had a good day on Friday and it was up 17, 18% for the week. Looking at all stocks, both in the US and internationally, they've been in a real downtrend, but we are seeing a bit of a bounce here. Can it continue? Emerging markets also has been in a downtrend, but showing some recent strength. Then looking at world stocks, China's been doing really well, but they may be topping out here. When you look at the other markets, emerging markets, Europe, Japan, and the US, they all show that we have been in a longer term downtrend. Some correlations, here's the S&P to the dollar, which shows we're pretty much neutral. When we get back up to the zero line, it doesn't mean that they're really going in the same direction or in the opposite direction. When you look at oil and the S&P, same thing, getting back to zero. When you look at the S&P and the 10-year yield, they still have a fairly strong inverse relationship, but it's starting to get more back to neutral. And then tech, against the 10 year, where they also have an inverse relationship, but that may be starting to weaken. Here's the S&P against the two year yield, which shows that we're kind of starting to get back more to a neutral reading. So what are the positive things? And if you watch any of these videos, these are the same. We're just seeing some potential shifts in these areas, but all of these areas that had been positive have remained positive. And those that have been negative, and I had to make the type pretty small here, these still remain negative, but we might be seeing some improvement. So it might help you to look at some of the daily videos, because I'll be updating this all the time and pointing these things out. So thank you. I hope that you have a very good week. I'll prepare the next intermarket analysis video next weekend. And if you find that some of my other videos might be helpful to you, I hope that you can put them to good use.